Nicola Sturgeon's lies on Brexit trade are exposed and the Eurozone fall into another recession. Well, you know what we like to do on this channel? Expose the lies and hypocrisy of the establishment, specifically the SNP government. We remember Nicola Sturgeon, the first minister who spent for the last few, couple of years, few years, warning us about Brexit and how damaging it's going to be. We remember back in October when she warned us that Brexit disruptions at the end of the year will be inevitable and you can't escape it. And this is the end of the world and Scotland will be in trouble. And the only way to save it is to leave the UK and join the European Union. Of course, that didn't happen. One of the warnings was about Aberdeen and trade when it comes to, well, especially exports from Scotland. They told us that products will be lost and will be in a lot of trouble. Evening Express have now published their latest update on this, confirming that no products lost due to Brexit red tape. This is according to uh, Aberdeen Council officials. Now, these were the concerns that were raised at the time uh, with the environmental health officers over the effects of increased red tape and documentation at Aberdeen Harbour and whether that would lead to perishable goods having to be discarded. Now, this has now been exposed that that didn't happen. Of course, at the beginning of the post-Brexit Britain uh, life that we have, we had some issues with red tape and that, you know, exactly why. The European Union loved their bureaucracy and we had to get used to that. Uh, and of course, a lot of businesses, especially small, medium-sized businesses, had to get used to the new regime that we have. Um, now, Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP have been using this as a political tool because they knew that the elections were coming up in Scotland and we only have a couple of weeks to go to find out what's going on uh, in that regard. But the mainstream media should really talk about this. They were very, very on top of everything when it came to warning about the Brexit chaos and disaster that we're going to have. But since 2016, for about four or five years, we kept hearing it every day on the media. But when good reports and positive news come out, we don't hear anything from them. And we're going to talk about the problem that the SNP are now facing because um, we've been talking about this dream of independence that's actually going down right now. And uh, But let's just say somehow Scotland become independent tomorrow. There are a number of issues that they are now facing when it comes to the Eurozone. But let's stick to the topic of uh, the lies that they've been telling us and how they should really focus on their own problems. The way the SNP government have been running Scotland, they've been ruining the financial aspects of the governance in Scotland. And we just discovered that uh, what, what Sturgeon's government did, they, they like nationalizing industries. They nationalized a shipyard in Glasgow uh, back in December. Guess what happened? For the past uh, four months, they've racked up 100 million pounds of uh, worth of losses. Of course, that happens when you nationalize industries. They thought a lot of people who are sometimes pro nationalization, uh, even if it's temporary, they think, well, private companies, a, a, a private firm that was created by free individuals fail. So it's the job of the state and gov government to come and act as angels and we'll save them and everything will be fine. Well, of course, certain companies and certain industries, you cannot save them. And if, especially if they're already dead, we saw a number of them back in the 80s. So this is a perfect example of uh, the bureaucrats in the SNP government running a shipyard and actually they made it even worse than what it was before. If they were really concerned about uh, people in Scotland and businesses in Scotland, they would do something about this mentality. Also, we know how they've been running the budget over the last uh, well, decade or so. Things are getting worse. Now, over the last uh, year or so, since 2020, the Scottish deficit has been going up. It's now almost around 25% of the GDP that they have. Now, the problem is that they would say, well, of course, we've been dealing with public health crisis since 2020. Well, England was doing the same thing. Wales were doing the same thing. Northern Ireland had the same problems. Yet, the situation in Scotland is worse than what we expected. The Institute for Fiscal Studies uh, yesterday reported that actually it's now between 22 to 25% of the GDP, the deficit that we are seeing, uh, and compared to uh, the previous year, which was 8.6%, which of course is still high. And, and although they did predict it's going to be worse than this because they knew how Nicola Sturgeon's government are going to be uh, managing the budget, uh, the problem here is that higher public spending in Scotland uh, is actually paid for by fiscal transfer from England. Yes, 
as long as uh, the Scottish government have England, they could still pay for a lot of things. This is the same England that Scottish, um, the Scottish National Party keep attacking every single day. Think they say that, oh, they, well, the English politicians and English taxpayers are controlling us. We have to be free. Well, if you be free, how are you going to pay for all these things that you are doing right now? Uh, it's, uh, that's the problem with the fiscal transfer that's actually coming from England and Westminster government. Now, uh, David Phillips, who is an associate director at the think tank at the Institute for Fiscal Studies, has said that the gap between Scotland and the rest of the UK is actually uh, structural. Not really. It's not really just about the situation. It's a problem that's been happening for a long time. And even if the UK's public finances were in balance, we would still see Scotland's deficit to be around 6%, worse than Wales and Northern Ireland at the moment. Worse than Wales. The Welsh Labour Party. Somehow they're doing better than the SNP in Scotland. Now, I don't understand what's happening there, but uh, we know that uh, Mark Drakeford is not a good manager, but he's performing much better than Queen Nicola. And so these guys have the dream of destroying the UK, destroying the system, starting from scratch, and then go to the European Union to beg for more money. Uh, and of course, the opposition parties are slightly incompetent right now. The Tories in Scotland, the Labour Party. Having said that, the new Labour leader, Saba, has been pretty impressive recently. He's been calling out all the hypocrisy, all the lies of the uh, SNP government. Uh, he's, he's now accusing Sturgeon of uh, uh, making much worse mistakes than the UK government as a whole when it comes to uh, the pandemic that we had over the last year or so. Um, and he's right. So, it, and to be fair, it's kind of embarrassing that Sawa, who's a, who's a new leader, is actually performing much better than the Tories. And, of course, the Liberal Democrats, who still exist. So the SNP, who have been exposed, yet the mainstream media, the likes of the BBC and Sky News, still let them get away with a lot of things, are going to be in trouble after the election. Of course, they're going to survive the election. They probably might end up losing seats and uh, losing the, you know, the majority that they want to have. But afterwards, they're going to be facing the electorate in Scotland uh, because all the lies are going to get worse. They've we've now discovered that uh, the SNP MPs are coming out to say, we are absolutely happy to accept the Eurozone. Of course, that's one of the prices. If you want to um, join the European Union as a new member, as a new nation, you have to. Uh, accept euro as your new currency. The issue here is that uh, uh, with the plans to have the euro as a currency, Scotland's debt is way too high to actually join the euro. So the European Union, of course, they, they are a protectionist, incompetent group, but they still have requirements. And Scotland is so bad, the Scottish government, that they can't even meet those requirements. So you know what they've done? They've said, well, in that case, we're going to keep the pound if we become independent and then join the eurozone N no you can't do that so firstly if you want to join the eu you have to get euro and you can't join euro until you sort out your debt and deficit uh, and if you keep the pound which by the way you, you can't just randomly demand if you've already left the U uk uh, then you can't join the euro the european union it's simple and also this desperation with uh, joining the european union is fascinating we just discovered earlier today that the Eurozone GDP uh, contracts uh, is actually gone down. It's, uh, it's now into a double dip recession territory. I, this is the same Eurozone and the European Union that Nicola Sturgeon's team are desperate to join. Really. And we know that uh, Ursula von der Leyen, the European Commission and also the European Council overall uh, didn't know exactly how to manage the recovery since uh, 2020. Uh, we now discovered that the economy a part of the, the 19 countries who have the euro have shrank by 0.6% overall in the first three months of 2021. And as a share overall, it's by 1.8% year on year. And this is the same boat that's going down that you still have certain liberal left-wing remainers being obsessed with joining. And so over the next few months, we're going to see some updates on uh, the health of the Eurozone. We know that uh, Ursula von der Leyen's officials and Eurocrats are coming up with new plans to centralize the Eurozone and the European Union even further when it comes to the central banking in Europe. Uh, so expect more banks and businesses to move to London, and despite what they said was going to happen 
with Brexit. I will keep you guys posted on this channel as usual. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm my ITC and I'll see you guys in the next video.